Gilbert's Bar G Ranch sits between the Rocky Mountains and the Sinbad Desert in Castledale, Utah. Since the 70s, Dwayne Gilbert has run a variety of livestock, including cattle and horses. Today, semi-retired, he raises a small herd of Grant Zebra. Horses have been domesticated for thousands of years, yet despite how similar they appear, zebra have never been tamed. They've had lions chasing them for thousands of years, okay? Anything new, anything happens, they run. That's the only thing they know is to run or bite and kick. So if they're cornered, they're gonna bite and kick. I've heard stuff on TV that they've seen instances where a zebra could crush a lion's head. I would believe it. Dwayne has been running zebra for around 20 years and applies the knowledge he's gained from raising horses. We raised horses for a lot of years. We, uh, we had a, a breeding stallion, run 20 head of brood mares. Uh, so I, I understood horses a lot. And a friend of ours in California says, you know, you like horses. You do really well. You gotta try zebras. And so we bought a few zebras and we just really enjoyed them. When we got our first zebras, it was a little bit cold. So I called the zoo and they said, oh, you have to have heated barns and you have to have this and you have to have that. So I did that and the zebras were beating each other up. They didn't like being contained. And so I, when I called my friend, he says, turn them loose. Zebras have to have a place to go. I turned them loose and everything was fine. To an experienced rancher like Dwayne, handling a zebra herd is not unlike raising other, more common livestock. When we load the babies up, when they're ready to wean, we'll go up to our corrals and I'll feed them up there and we'll put them in a corral. The next day I'll feed outside the corral and I'll just stand at the gate and wait for the ones to come out that I don't want until we have what we want left in there. We go from there into a loading alley and, and right into a horse trailer. It's like working with wild horses or cattle. They're not broke the lead. You're not gonna just push them in. If you'll notice, I fed my zebras. I strung the hay out. They're just like other animals. They have a pecking order. If you don't string it out, if you've got it all in one container in a feeder, you're gonna have three or four in there and you're gonna have them kicking and biting and they'll still grab the hay, pull it out of the feeder and eat it off the ground. And so I'd rather bring it out here where there's some grass and it's a little bit cleaner and string it out, let the zebras find their pecking order and they have a place to run. They have a place to go more than just 10 feet in case something happens. Dwayne's years owning zebra have made him highly knowledgeable about his striped equine herd. If there's a situation that we have to have a vet here, then we'd, we'd sure call him. I've used a couple of different vets. I know more about them than they do, but they're there with their experience and so that they can help do their end of it. As far as bringing them in, putting them in a chute or something, uh, you know, I'm more familiar with them and they just kind of stand back and then when we get them in there, then they, they're able to do what they can. While many zebra owners raise their unusual pets to be fully domesticated, Dwayne prefers his to remain wild. I leave them wild for a reason. I, I don't halter break, I don't bottle feed my baby zebras. When I want zebras in my herd, I want them so that they're scared of me, okay? I don't want one that's not scared of me to wear uh, if, if there's an incident, it's gonna, you know, hurt me. I don't want that. As any other animal, especially equine, you take a stallion, and if they're not scared of you, 
when they get their hormones, a, a, a horse of any kind, you don't know if they can turn on you or at some time bite you. And zebras are the same. And if they're tame, they're not scared of you. And I can take my stallions and, and uh, th they're just like this. Slow down a little bit, bud. You can feed them, they'll come up to you, be right by you when you wanna feed them. But if you move, they're gone, okay? I like that. Another thing I like about this, this is natural out here. There's cleaner grass, they have an area, they're not in a corral where it's chances of uh, infections or stuff. As a practiced rancher, Dwayne is always alert when working around large animals, especially unpredictable wild animals with a kick that can easily crack a skull. We do have coyotes here. We have mountain lions that will come down occasionally from the mountains. One of the things we have to watch is dogs. A zebra will kill a dog real fast. And yet, if they're in a contained area, the dog will scare them. So that's, again, if they're out here, they're fine. They'll chase a dog down because it's a predator to them, and they're going to defend their babies. I could probably walk over there, but anybody different, uh, they, it, they're just scared. They're leery of anything new, anything, you know, more than one person out here. Zebras are aggressive animals, and fights between males are common and violent. In May of 2018, a woman in Zimbabwe was attacked by a zebra she had kept as a pet for 10 years. It bit off her thumb and part of one breast. Even as an old hand, highly experienced in handling livestock, Dwayne has been on the receiving end of a zebra's bad mood. There was a time I sold a, a little male zebra and he was, I think, three or four months old. And the guy wanted me to deliver him. So in order to keep it calm, to keep from hurting itself, I rode in a horse trailer with it and I had a halter on it and I would hold it. And he kept trying to bite my leg. Every time, <laughs> every time he, you'd think he was okay, he'd go wham and he'd try to bite my leg and I'd have to hold his head up. You know, another time we weaned a baby uh, that was just a, a week old from its mother. And I usually run them through a, a chute that's got rubber belting on it to protect them. And then we just let the mother out and hold the baby. Well, I got in with the baby after the mother got out and she was going over the top trying to bite me I thought, you know, this is not a good situation. I should have been farther away, but luckily she couldn't reach me. But there again, she was protecting her baby. A strong protective instinct and an equally strong tendency to startle makes for a highly unpredictable animal. So do zebras make good pets? People want some that are bottle fed. When they want a bottle fed one, they take them anywhere from two days old up to 10 days old to 30 days old, and they can still bottle feed them. When they bottle feed them, it just makes them gentler. Uh, petting zoos want a gentle zebra, okay? People that uh, want to put one with a couple of horses and have in their yard, in their pasture, they, they want one that's calmer, so they'll buy one and raise it on a bottle. Other people, I've seen them take them at six months old, 10 months old, uh, a year old, and put a halter on them and still break them to lead. They take a lot of work in order to get them at that point, though. A bottle-fed baby will, will bond with uh, the person that's feeding it. We've seen an instance in uh, California one time. We visited some friends, and they had a little bottle baby zebra, and it was only 30 days old and they had kind of a party. Well, this zebra would follow its mother around, which is feeding her, you know, on a bottle, 
follow her around, and if somebody would come up and talk to her, she would get in between the two people. Like, this is my mom, leave her alone. <laughs> Dwayne also breeds and sells his zebras, and his customers have a whole range of different reasons for wanting to own one. You know, I've been raising them over 20 years, and uh, you know, uh, you just, I don't know, it just seems like we have a number of people every year still calling saying, you know, I got a zebra from you, I want another one, and of course petting zoos, they've been good clients. There's still so much of the public out there that doesn't know that you can own a zebra. And it seems owning zebras can also bring some completely unexpected surprises and special moments. One time a young girl from Salt Lake called me. She had heard we had zebras and she had just loved them. And I didn't know her. She called and says, if we brought a photographer down, could we get some pictures of me in my wedding dress no. with the zebras? And I says, you can try. But I says, you put a white dress on and step out in front of them zebras and they're gonna leave. And she says, well, I'd really like to try. I just love everything about zebras. Her and her mother showed up, and she got in her wedding gown and had the photographer down here. And we came down here, and I put some feed out for the zebras. And they left the feed and walked right up behind that girl in that mm -hmm. white dress like, that is something different. You just don't know how they're going to act. So many times, I think they're going to just run and get away from anything that's new, and yet all of a sudden they'll turn around and, and say, hey, this doesn't scare us. See, we've got one here that says, there is something different over there. <laughs> they may not make good riding or working livestock, and their flighty nature makes them dangerous. But it's clear that the lives of Dwayne and his family are obviously enriched by having their very own zebra herd. We love our zebras. I'll come out here in my truck and watch them and watch them. And, and you'll see the same thing as you'll see zebras in the wild. And to watch them run and play, especially the babies, you know, you'll get four or five babies together and they'll just run around the pasture playing and, and dart in and out of the other mares. And they're an animal. So you just have to watch them and learn learn about them.